Hello and welcome to the Stephen Mendes channel. Today we are looking at clipping in the signal processor, the Q125 signal processor. Now with the series from synthesizers.com, we get a plus or minus 5 volt out, 10 volt peak to peak from the oscillators. If we put that into the signal processor and we increase that by 200%, that's going to give us 10 volts on the positive side and 10 volts on the negative side. And if we shift it up using our offset control, which can raise it or lower it by 5 volts, that's going to add another 5 volts to that 10 volts. So the possibility would seem to uh, indicate that we could have a maximum output from the signal processor of 15 volts, either positive or negative, depending on how we set our controls. Now the operational amplifiers on which these circuits are built have a negative 15 volts or positive 15 volts supplying power to them. Those are referred to as the power supply rails. You cannot exceed the 15 volts. When the output of the operational amplifier swings in the positive direction it cannot, not only can it not exceed the 15 volts, but it cannot quite reach the 15 volts. There's going to be a sort of one volt or so voltage drop across the device. So in fact, the maximum output swing we could possibly have would be from say plus 14 volts to negative 14 volts. So if our control actually requires it to swing to 15 volts, it can't do it. So there's going to be some sort of clipping of the waveform occurring. So this is the theoretical basis on which the behavior of this signal processor has got to be evaluated. So let us now turn to the oscilloscope to see what might happen. Here we're looking at a sine wave which has been amplified 200%. So we've got the gain set to maximum. And as you can see in the diagram, our input voltage control for the channel is set to 5 volts per division. And we've got two squares uh, below the zero line and two squares above it as you can see two squares above it and two squares below it and if we flip it to ground our signal disappears and we can see that we need to adjust our calibration position just slightly flip it back on and we've got our 10 volts above and below the zero line now what happens when we start to offset the, remember that we have our scope tracking on DC, so we can add a DC offset to uh, this wave shape, which will push it up or down by 5 volts. We're about to do that now, so it should, if our theory is correct, it should move up a square or down a square. Watch now as I offset the waveform by 5 volts. It, we are going in the positive direction. Notice we have reached the top and there is a small amount of clipping. I don't know if you can see that there. We could try zooming in a little more. Small amount of clipping on the top peak. We go back down and we adjust the offset for negative 5 volts. 
Now the clipping is more obvious here on the negative peak than on the positive peak, as you can see it there. But it's still only a small amount of clipping. And uh, you can, in fact, measure it because it's actually one small division between the centimeter scale. And since there are five of them, that translates to about one volt because we're working five volts per division on the current vertical setting. Okay? So you will say to yourself, well, why is the bottom uh, peak of the wave clipped more than the top peak? And the wave is not 100% symmetrical, as you can see there by looking at it. It may look so, but it's not 100% symmetrical. And the difference is small. So, we're not going to demean the wonderful Q125 signal processor. We've, uh, in fact, encountered negative, uh, negative uh, flack on uh, Muff Wiggler for even suggesting that there could be anything wrong with a perfect module. At least at the price that it is, we can't complain. However, it's a pretty good circuit, okay? And you'll be hard pressed to find a better one on the market. Don't think that the Euro Rack format is going to give you any superior results when you perform these tests. And I would love somebody who has the Euro Rack and an oscilloscope to actually publish some test data for their modules, okay? So we opening up opening it up here we are we are giving you training we're giving you teaching we're giving you free information and we're giving you benchmarks by which you may check your module and we would love your feedback if you have a module and it behaves any differently to what you're seeing here please let us know okay we would love to hear from you now the other thing you might be wondering is does that small amount of clipping at the positive or negative half cycle affect the timber of the tone or what does it do to the harmonic spectrum and we're gonna look at that now very briefly we're gonna put it through the amplifier and we're going to give you a frequency domain analysis of the wave to see what if any partials are added as a result of that small a negligible amount of clipping. We could not see the difference on the frequency and domain analysis app that we have. That may just suggest that it's a poor app. We need more better equipment, but we can certainly hear it. So we're going to let you hear it instead of see it. Once again, we're going to perform. Now we have the tone. Listen carefully to what happens when it clips. You hear it? Now this is what analog synthesis is all about. Getting familiar with hearing and seeing your waveforms. Thank you for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and we'll see you soon again.